Right, hi people. Uh, today uh, we're going to be doing a cooling temperature sensor on uh, a Jaguar X type diesel. Um, it's also uh, refers to the Mondeo as well, the 2 litre and the 2.2. Um, so yeah, first thing what I'll suggest is um, on your wheel, put a little shock underneath it. Um, drive on with a brick maybe, or I've got a little uh, ramp there jack it up just to make it a little bit easier for you to uh, lean over because uh, it's a little bit awkward and it can hurt your back a bit too much so it's all about health and safety so on to the current temperature sensor as you can see i've just just um taken the bits and bobs off um i imagine you've probably got that far by yourselves already um and then uh, i've popped the wire through here uh through the power steering pulley uh, normally that goes through there and it pops out there and it clips up onto the other one that's up here um, and uh, I've also taken off the little metal this little metal clip that fits onto here there it is now the old metal clip there so that pops onto there okay pull that to one side so as you can see you can trace the wire down let's put some light in the situation um, you should be able to see the coolant temperature sensor in there. See, little shiny thing down there. All right. Now people have said to me, ah, oh, you know, you can just connect the um, this belt here off the pulley by releasing the tensioner here. There's a tiny little square. There. If you can see it down there, just underneath there. Now you can't. I can see it, but you guys can't see it. Just there, look, little tension there. Pop a little uh, 3 8 drive, I think it is, in there, and you can release tension, take your belt off, take this off, take your pulley off. And I thought, mm, that sounds a bit too long winded to me. Now, uh, you can also buy yourself a tool, um, but it's called a, mm, what's it called? It's called a cylinder head coolant temperature sensor socket. Very similar to an O2 socket, it's got a slot down the side. I don't like it because it's only so high. Um, and you can't really, you know, your wire can get trapped again, and I don't want to damage this wire. So I was thinking there's got to be another way to, to do this without damaging the new wire. And I came up with an idea of taking a ring spanner, like so, a 15mm ring spanner. Um, that's 15, and I'll put a slot on the end, okay, with an angle grinder. Um, simple as that, okay. Really cheap, basic one I kind of found, um, and I did that. So, let's see if this works. Right. 